This is the fastest C the fastest CPU. Fastest CPU on the planet. In the world. In the world, and why do I feel like this has happened before? It's because AMD keeps doing this. They're all new. Epic Genoa CPUs are available with up to 96 Zen 4 cores in a single socket. They support up to six terabytes of DDR5 memory and feature 128 lanes of PCI Express Gen 5 connectivity. There is quite literally nothing else in the world like it. Even the size, it's absolutely monstrous. And this video is sponsored by Supermicro, who provided not one, but two servers rocking a total of three of these CPUs. What does the math even work out to on that? that that's like almost 300 cores. We've got to break some world records today, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing that's new about Epic Genoa, aside from everything, is the socket. Like its predecessors, it uses an LGA style socket, meaning that the pins are built into the motherboard rather than the bottom of the CPU. But unlike its predecessors, it has a whopping 6,096 pins, necessitating a massive landing pad on the motherboard and a seven screw hold down mechanism in order to make sure that even contact is made with all those little pins but they absolutely need them. And the biggest reason they need them is that to keep those 96 cores fed with data and working efficiently, aside from having 384 megabytes of onboard cache, Epic Genoa features a not two, not four, not six, but 12 channel DDR5 memory controller. Yeah, it only runs at 4,800 megatransfers per second, but it's 12 channels. That is an effective 12 xing of the bandwidth of a single module. Hey, we never did the size comparison with an Intel desktop CPU. Check this out. Look at it, it's like a little baby. We seem to have run into a problem already. I cleaned all the thermal compound off of this when we disassembled the server earlier, and I don't know if we have enough paste in this building. I'm feeling like at like X for extreme. We just used half a tube of thermal paste. You ain't building more than one server with one of these if you got a dual CPU system. On that note, Supermicro, who sponsored this video, has a whole lineup of Epic Genoa systems available right at launch. Everything from their Cloud DC workhorse affordable systems like the one I'm working on right now, all the way up to their hyper and GPU oriented servers, which are for absolutely zero compromises performance. I mean. Can you really say it's a compromise in performance if you have up to 192 CPU cores and up to 160 PCIe lanes in a single system? You cannot. Even though AMD has switched to a heatsink actuated socket, so that is to say, screwing in the heatsink is what applies enough pressure to the CPU to make contact with the pins, I gotta give them credit for still having that tray and that holder to keep it in place because, man, <clears throat> When you install some of the competition CPUs where they don't have that retention, it is scary. <gasps> Wait, okay, this is bad. The CPU just lifted up. Quick note, if it was important to have AMD's previous high performance sockets torqued correctly, it is triply important to have these sockets torqued correctly because even one screw slightly over or under tightened is gonna have the CPU sitting like this in the socket. And that's gonna be a real bad time. You could have everything from memory channels not detected to flaky PCI Express behavior to a system that doesn't boot at all. One of the drawbacks of having a 12 channel memory controller is that if you want to get the maximum performance out of your system, you better be ready to install a lot of memory sticks. Which isn't to say that you have to use 12, though if you want to do less than that, I would strongly recommend checking AMD's documentation because it is not as simple as just popping sticks in wherever you want. Oh, this is the first time I've been hands-on with a DDR5 server module. Now, regular DDR5 has a form of error checking and correction, or ECC, but it's only handled at the die level, whereas a full ECC module is going to have to have an extra die for every eight, which actually is not how this is configured. These have 10 packages per side. So do they actually have two ECC packages per eight? After a bit of off-camera research, it seems to be related to the way that individual DDR5 memory dies operate more like two previous generation dies, meaning that instead of needing one chip per group of eight, you need one chip per group of four. 
So these are fully proper ECC DIMMs that will protect data even when it's in flight. There's some other differences too. Just like consumer DDR5 modules, the Power Management IC, or PMIC, is built into the module rather than into the motherboard, but unlike consumer modules, the notch is in a different place, meaning that you won't be able to have a motherboard that will support both unbuffered and ECC memory, at least as far as I can tell. This is all very, very new at the moment. Before we go too much further and start covering things up, now's the perfect opportunity to talk not just about the performance, but also the flexibility a platform like Epic Genoa provides. I mentioned already that each of these CPUs supports up to 128 lanes of PCI Express Gen 5. That means even on a basic server from Supermicro's Cloud DC lineup, you are looking at an utterly unbelievable amount of connectivity. In this one alone, we've got dual OCP 3.0 cards, which are typically used for networking. We've got these CXL slots, okay? Each of these running at PCIe Gen 5 by 16, and CXL is so cool. It uses the same physical connections as PCI Express, but a new protocol that allows you to do wild things like put a, a separate memory controller into a slot in your computer and add a whole bunch more RAM to it. <laughs> like what? And even if you fill all of this stuff up, in a server like this one that's using three and a half inch bays, you are going to run out of slots before you're gonna run out of PCIe lanes as you cram the front of it full of SSDs. Now, unfortunately, PCI Express Gen 5 SSDs haven't hit the market yet, but when they do, things are gonna get really cool because instead of needing four lanes to get the most out of these SSDs, in non-performance critical applications, like say it's more about capacity, you're gonna be able to take just two Gen 5 lanes and get the same performance you would have gotten from four Gen 4 lanes just one generation ago. And what was really mind-blowing for me, thinking about how fast PCI Express Gen 5 is, a single PCIe Gen 5 lane is the same speed as a 16x slot of PCIe Gen 1. The size doesn't matter that much. Yvonne, you're watching this, right? Look, they can't even put full-size slots on the board. They just got these 8X, are those 8X? I think they're 8X. And this has applications outside of just storage as well. Say, for example, we were gonna take this PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot right here and plug a you know, daughter board or mezzanine card into it. We could plug in literally four PCIe Gen 4 by 8 cards and have all of them run at full freaking speed. That's wild. Well, you need a pretty complex PCIe switch to go back to Gen 4 and have that full bandwidth. But, but that's not the point. The point is that outside of storage and networking, almost nothing needs Gen 5 bandwidth anyway. And you can see Supermicro knows that. So this is just a simple daughter board that is absolutely covered in Gen 5 lanes. We go from 16 to 16 to 80 lanes. And they figure this will probably be fine. And they're probably right. <laughs> Not that we're doing anything like that with it. We're just using one of these slots for an RJ45 network card because we don't have the PC build corner wired up with uh, QSFP, which is uh, what the network card that Supermicro sent over with this thing uses. <laughs> okay, there's one more thing about this socket that I didn't tell you guys yet. Unlike AMD's previous server socket, SP5 is rated for up to 400 watts, which is like, what? I thought Zen 4 was more efficient. Well, yeah, it is. But we went from up to 64 cores to up to 96 cores. Some concessions had to be made. And that's why, can I remind you again, this is a cloud DC, like workhorse class server. Supermicro is shipping 1200 watt redundant power supplies in a server that's not even designed for GPU use. Spicy, look how long this thing is. Not that it's about length. Vaughn, you're watching this, right? It's not about length. But is it longer than a 4090? Oh, 4090 for scale. Okay, let's fire this thing up. We have a liftoff. Now for best possible cooling, we're gonna wanna put the top cover on this because otherwise these fans, instead of drawing air across these NVMe drives and blowing it through the CPU heatsink, they're just drawing air from here and blowing it out here. Also, that's really annoying. That's a little better. Three hours later. No, but in all seriousness, at the moment, Epic Genoa takes about 10 minutes to boot up. 
Uh, but AMD says they are working on that. So, good. <laughs> Gotta get that memory training going. Hey, hey! We had time to go get monitors, plug them all in, get <laughs> all the network. And we're only halfway there. Oh, good. <laughs> Since we're still waiting, we might as well take this opportunity to talk about one of Supermicro's hyper servers. The main difference between Cloud DC and hyper platform servers is that instead of one CPU with up to 96 cores, you've got up to two CPUs with up to 96 cores. That's right, 192 cores. That's 384 threads and up to 12 terabytes of DDR5 memory. You've also got, okay, you lose some of the PCIe lanes in CPU to CPU connectivity. So 160 lanes of PCIe Gen 5. And that means that whether you wanna connect 10 flipping GPUs to one of these things or many, many additional nodes of storage devices, they have got the horses. One cool thing is that if you're more into compute than expansion, you can configure the CPUs to allocate more of their PCIe lanes to socket-to-socket -to -socket communication, leaving you only 128 lanes, but more bandwidth between your sockets. Neat, huh? We're gonna try and put this in here. Um, hmm. Hey, did it finally boot? Yeah, we're in Windows now. That was literally over 15 minutes. We need something to put that GPU on because it's sitting a little funky. What could go wrong? Ha! Perfect. Holy crap. This is one CPU! 96 cores! I mean, I only at 1.85 gigahertz right now, but they'll get faster. What we're expecting is somewhere in the range of around 2.4 gigahertz when all cores are under load, which means you actually kind of need to think carefully about your application when picking an Epic Genoa processor. If you want higher clock speeds, you may not necessarily be better off with the, the higher tier, higher core chip. One cool thing, by the way, about Supermicro's Hyper lineup that we're not showing off very well is that compared to Cloud DC, they are totally toolless. It's pretty nice when you got to work on a hundred of them. So how will I use my screwdriver from LTTstore.com? We ready? Boom. Well, that's a disappointment. JK, JK, JK. I ran it in single core mode. I actually just wanted to see what it would clock to. And it looks like Task Manager is not gonna give us a useful account of that, so. I HW have info. Here. You don't have HW info? I, I put it, I, I, I focused on the other server. You focused. Because I had two of them. Fo he focused, he says. You should be thankful I got it in stuff. I should be thankful. <laughs> Hardware info has either crashed or hung both times I've tried to launch it. I'm not blaming them. This is an extremely new platform. I'm just saying we're not going to know exactly what frequency that core is running at. Sorry. Here we go. Uh, oh my goodness. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, buddy. Two put it's done. That's a 32 core thread ripper with that tiny little blue bar, 75,000. And this is, this is one chip. Now that's not that impressive compared to a thread ripper, which obviously will turbo quite a bit higher. But it, it's just one of, it's just one. We can have two. I think this one's done booting up now. Is it, is it in? Have we hacked the mainframe? Are we getting the windows spinny? Unfortunately, our RTX 4090 experiment did not work. It's not showing up. We did manage to get a Quadro GPU working earlier, but we're not gonna break any world records with that. So we're gonna focus on CPU performance for the time being. Starting, of course, with Cinebench, but now with two 96 core CPUs. 384 threads and two sockets. They completely break the UI. Look at this, you have to scroll. It's full screen and you have to scroll. Look at the L3 cache. Oh shoot, I had level three cache on the mind earlier when I said these things had three quarters of a gig of cache. No, no, they've got almost an entire gigabyte of cache. The 768 megs is just level three. This thing has more cache than my first gaming system had RAM. We've got a problem. 
This is only running 256 of our 368 threads. I didn't think about that, but Cinebench actually has a thread count limit. We only got 82,000 points. Now, hold on just a gosh darn minute here. Is there a quick and easy way for us to turn off SMT? Oh no, oh no, my God. We have, to reboot. we have to reboot, we're not rebooting. We're gonna find other benchmarks to run. Time to benchmark pi. For those unfamiliar, Y-Cruncher calculates pi up to, what is this, two quadrillion decimal places? We have absolutely no idea what we're doing, which is why it'll be so embarrassing when we're at the top of the leaderboard. <laughs> Enter your choice, benchmark pi. One. Multi-threaded. Okay, we so we need two seven, and a half billion. Seven or nine. No, we'll do seven, we're going for seven. Let's go. One moment, please. Wow, it's done and the fans barely even kicked in. Holy crap, 15.783 seconds. Holy crap, this is not just faster. This is like half the time. And this record was set back in December of 2021? Okay, how do we submit a score? I have no idea. We're logged into hardware bot. Linus Tech 6969. And wait, what? Invalid data file. What? Unable to encrypt the, what, what? Unable to encrypt what? It's a text file. What does it say in the instructions? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I have no idea. This is not encrypted. You guys saw it. It's fast. This video is wrong, past Linus. We moved the server over to the server room and we are remoted into it right now using Supermicro's integrated IPMI KVM. And all we gotta do is click right here and... Ready, ready, wait for it. Bloody hell, where is it? There it is, go team Canada. Not only do we have the record in this no holds barred competition, but we are holding it by nearly half the time. But one record is not enough for us. That's why we installed Ubuntu and fired up the Pharonix test suite where we will be benchmarking, I don't know, why don't we start with X264, Bosphorus uh, 4K, boop. Winner, dinner, made of chicken. Uh, can chicken. <laughs> Here's what we're going for. The number to beat is 75 frames per second average. For this test, we compare results on openbenchmarking.org, which isn't a competitive site like HardwareBot, but it does show us the top result, which was a dual 32 core Epic system that managed 75 frames per second, plus or minus two. Where are we at here? 108 frames per second. See you later, record. Goodbye. <laughs> Box plot of samples, old line, new line. Yes, I certainly would like to upload this. Now it's time to take a run at John the Ripper, which is a password cracking benchmark. Recently saved to enter a name of the results file. Okay, dinner fish, winner. Delicious, but fishy. Estimated time to completion. Four minutes? No, unacceptable. Wait, am I reading this right? 26 million? I would like to upload it though. See you later records. Previous winner, fish dinner. <laughs> Time to run Blender. Let's go classroom. Let's see if we can cause some trouble on their site. Here we go. Estimated time to completion, two minutes. I doubt it. 19 seconds is the time to beat for classroom. Oh crap, <laughs> my file name was too long. Um, whoops. Oh crap, I definitely broke some things. Um. <laughs> Wait, 21.9 seconds? Uncool, uncool. It's not that this system isn't ripping fast, it's just that clearly someone with another dual 96 core test system got here first. Well, it's been a long day. It's been a long day of breaking records now. I feel like it's time to pack it in. Was that three or three or four? Seems seems pretty good. In conclusion, Epic Genoa, really fast, super micro, really cool hardware for Epic Genoa. Check them out at the link down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, I think I probably recorded one of these before, so let's just cut that back in. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the uh, maybe more structured platform overview that we did when AMD announced Epic Genoa, and you can check that out here, here, somewhere. <laughs>